Welcome to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast, where we share tips, techniques, and true stories to support you in using the law of attraction and alchemy to create magic and live the life of your dreams. Here's your host, the founder of DailyAlchemy.com, Michelle Martin Dobbins. Hey there, it's Michelle Martin Dobbins from DailyAlchemy.com. And today I want to talk to you about dancing with the matrix. I don't know how many of you guys have saw that the older older movie The Matrix and if you have you may have this view of what The Matrix is in the movie. It's this make believe world that we don't really live in but we think we do. And in my opinion, that's kind of where we are now. I don't mess, I don't actually I don't think that aliens have our real bodies somewhere else. But I think that this world is more pliable than we think it is. But right now when we're in it, it feels really, really real. So when I talk about Dancing with the Matrix, I'm talking about when you're in a situation that you want to change and you can't seem to make it change. And I think that it's fine to use Law of Attraction, Alchemy any kind of technique that helps you shift what's happening on the outside world. But one of the tenets of alchemy is as above, so below, as within, so without. So when you want to change the matrix, you have to start by changing inside, how you feel inside. Like I know sometimes people have good results from the law of attraction just by, you know, focusing on this car they want or this thing and they put it on a vision board. And that's fine and there's nothing wrong with that. And that's where a lot of people start. But I really feel like your deeper growth, you know, where the alchemy magic comes in is when you start shifting your inside and then the shifts that you get on the outside just become amazing. In my book, (laughs) Personal Alchemy, you can pick it up on Amazon if you are so inclined. But I talk about the difference between the law of attraction and alchemy. And to me, it's not actually what I believe the law of attraction to be, but just what people's misunderstandings of the law of attraction. Because law of attraction is really pretty much the same as alchemy. It's like attracts like, as above, so below. So when you're in that vibration of what you want, you're going to receive what you want. But some people just perceive it to be like, if I focus on this blue car, then I will get this blue car. And yes, that does sometimes happen. But usually, more often than not, after half an hour, there's no fulfillment in having that blue car. And then a lot of times you just keep focusing on the blue car and you're like, well, dang, this doesn't work because I didn't get my blue car. But you made no inner shift, no shift to line up with being the person who drives that blue car. Maybe I should say a blue Camaro or something that sounds (laughs) more appealing to drive than a blue car. But what you want to do when you are dancing with the matrix is you want to line yourself up with being the person who is the kind of person who has what you want. So the kind of person that has that blue car, you know, what kind of person would I be to be driving that blue Camaro? And the reason that this technique that I'm going to talk to you about now, I call dancing with the matrix is because we're going to be playing with the matrix, playing with what is and using that to shift how we feel inside, who we are. We're going to become a match to what we want. The thing is, Sometimes it's hard because you have resistance and you just can't wrap your mind around having something. You're too stuck in the wanting energy. And wanting energy is very, very different from having energy. If you have the energy of wanting something and it's like this desperate, you just kind of push it away. But if you have that energy of, I'm the kind of person that can have that. I know what it feels like to have it then the natural progression is for you to have it. But let's say right now you don't have it. And I'm going to step away from the the car issue a little bit and go to another example. This is one that I've known that a lot of people have experienced. 
which is you're in a job that you do not like and you do not want to be in this job and you want to be doing something different with your days and you're not very happy and you're trying to get a new job or figure out how to go to school or do what you need to do to get a new job. There is a couple of ways to deal with the fact that right now you're in a job that you don't like. And a lot of people, we want to resist it. We want to push against it. So maybe you're not doing the best job there. You're not wholehearted in what you're doing. And, you know, you may be half there. You're just kind of skating by. Well, the Matrix knows that. (laughs) That energy of just skating by, is that the energy that's going to get you that new job? No. And a lot of times we get scared. We're like, well, if I do this really good job or really play with this job that I'm in now, then I'll get stuck here. But that's not what happened. It lines you up to that energy that helps you move out sooner. So some of the ways, if you were in a job that you didn't like, that you could play with dancing with that the matrix around this job that you're in first of all you can just really pour love into that job be thankful for that job because right now it's paying your bills or hopefully it's paying your bills paying some of your bills giving you food it's giving you some good things so you start with being thankful for what is and then you see what you can what else can you give to what is like can you Be kinder to your coworkers. Can you be a more productive employee? How can you do the best that you can where you are right now? And then, you know, like if it's just really hard, there's a game that you can play. And I believe the, I think Marianne Williamson was the one that I heard talking about this. And she's like, you know, every job can be a minister. Every you know, a bartender, a hairdresser, it doesn't matter, a salesperson, you can be a minister. And she used to say, like, say in your head, Jesus sent me. And if it's Jesus isn't like something that lines up with you, God sent me, the universe sent me, the angels sent me. So tell yourself you're there for a purpose, you're there for a reason, and that, you know, you're going to fulfill that reason while you're there. And Maybe you don't always know. So you're kind of listening to your intuition for like, how could I be of more service here? How could I raise the vibration of this workplace? How could I make this person who walks through the door today feel better when they leave? Now, while you're doing that, you can still be looking for a new job. You can be taking night classes or doing what you need to do to move on. But when you're dancing with the matrix, playing around and what is and making it light and fun and not getting stressed and stuck and pushing away from it and resisting it. And that just kind of gets you stuck in it like the brer rabbit who got in the the briar bush. I guess it wasn't the rabbit, it was the bear who got stuck in the briar bush because the rabbit loved it, but the other one, the bear didn't. So don't let yourself get stuck in the energy. Play with it, have fun with it, be light with it. And I know sometimes that takes a little bit to do if you've been telling yourself that same old story. So that's one that has really, really worked well for me. I know when I was in a job that was not my joy, I just would get in there every morning (laughs) before I went in and I I just felt my energy go down. (sighs) Okay, I'm going into this place and I do not love it. But what am I going to do? I'm going to try to raise the energy of this place and kind of look for ways and ask for ways. Ask the universe to show me ways that I can be of service while I'm here and that my time that I spend here can be valuable to the planet. And, you know, you can be valuable to the planet in McDonald's. Gosh, I tell you, I'm getting off on a little tangent and I'm sorry, but I, I've met some of the most beautiful, lovely, heart touching people in places like McDonald's and Walmart and such. And I know a lot of people are like, oh, I dread to go in these places. And I've told these stories before on this podcast of just like going in there, looking for the beauty in everyone, looking at everyone through the eyes of love. And that has shifted. And you find that when you're in that, you know, 
as within, so without. So when you're in that, I'm looking for the beauty, I'm looking for the love, I'm sharing my love, then you end up getting these people everywhere you go in the most likely place, unlikely places who are just delightful. I mean, I went through a McDonald's the other day. My daughter and I, we always joke about, we get the, like, we don't go through fast food very often and very rarely do we go through McDonald's. But every time we do, like, the the total nicest people are there. Like, you're just like, you're amazing. Like, they just, they have an uplifting voice. And they, oh, darling, yep, come around here. You change. How you doing today, sweetheart? I mean, just, and you can just feel they're, they're just enthusiastic they're happy they're loving people who happen to be working at mcdonald's i mean gosh that lady gave joy to hundreds of people who came through her checkout line that day and maybe she gave a whole lot more in joy dollars than you know the ceo of some big company who was locked in his office having negotiations and not, not that's not to put down ceos of big companies because some of them are very giving, loving people who make, you know, huge impacts on the planet. But it doesn't matter where you are, or what you're doing. When you shift your inside, then you can make big impact on everyone you meet. They can feel it. I just, I go back to the checkout people because I've had that happen so many times where these people are just... Raising the vibration of everybody who comes through their line or their drive through or, you know, and just think you have that opportunity no matter where you are, even if the only people you see are coworkers, even if you work from home and you're just working on the computer, you can send love out to the people that you are emailing <laughs> during the day. When you shift your perspective of what you're doing, then you end up being rewarded. And the funny thing is it's it usually comes faster if you're not looking for that. If you're just wanting to shift, wanting to change how you feel on the inside and who you who you are being on the inside, then everything on the outside slowly starts to shift. I mean, sometimes quicker than you <laughs> anticipate it, but it does. It shifts. It's magic, I guess. It's not magic. It's just universal principles. And, you know, you can't trick the universe. You can't pretend that you've shifted on the inside when you haven't. I've had this happen before to me. One of my daughters was having, like, she had these horrible tantrums for a while. And, you know, you get into that thing of, like, oh, everybody's looking at me like I'm a bad mom. We're out in public. My daughter's having a tantrum. And I remember one time I was like, you know what, I'm just going to let this, I'm just going to relax and just, you know, support her and not try to get stressed and embarrassed and just stop her. And I was like, okay, I'm prepared for this to just go how it goes. And he, all I'm going to do is give her love and support. And of course she stopped immediately. <laughs> then, you know, a few weeks later, tantrum and I'm like, pretending that I'm going to stop wanting to stop but still having that fear embarrassment anger about her behavior and guess what the tantrum went on yeah you can't fool you can't fool the universe you can't fool anybody you can't you can't fool yourself and you can't fool anybody else people can pretend we can pretend not to know what we're vibrating and other people can pretend not to know but the truth of the matter is that we all can feel it unless we put up walls. And a lot of us do have some walls that we can slowly build down, but that's a topic for a whole, a whole nother podcast. <laughs> so just to kind of go back over wherever you are right now, if you can be thankful, that's your first step. Be thankful that for the good that is in where you are right now. And second, try to find a way to be playful and light with where it is. And third, be of service to others and yourself just to put as much joy and love in what you're doing now. And that is the trick to changing 
the outside world from the inside world. And I'd be remiss to tell you, if you do this for a couple weeks and you say, everything on the outside did not change, this didn't work, this is a bunch of bluey, I'm not going to do it, then you miss the whole point. Because the whole point is actually not to get the outside world to change. The outside world, it's just here to be a catalyst for our change, to give us a reason to want to change the inside because that's where all the good stuff is, you know? That's where the fulfillment, the joy, the bliss, the happiness, the real, true, long-lasting contentment is in changing the inside. I say this, you know, to tell you that, yes, if you change the inside, the outside will change. It has to. But it's just like me with the child having a temper tantrum. You can't do it or pretend to do it so that you make a change on the outside. What usually happens is when you work and you focus on changing that inside, and I say work, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek, maybe not tongue-in-cheek, because it, it shouldn't be hard. It should be light and joyful and childlike. But when you make those changes to change your inside and how you feel on the inside, the outside has to change too. The fun part is that a lot of times it changes in ways you could have never expected. And what you were trying to make happen wasn't necessarily the right thing. I'm not saying that you can't try to make choices in your life, but sometimes just ah, stopping and saying, okay, I'm just going to work on the inside and see what happens on the outside. But I'm going to tell you the really, really big win is the inside change. The outside is just icing on the cake. So go out there this week, make some magic, dance with the matrix, be thankful for what is. And I'd love to hear any of your results with this, or if you've played with this before, had some big changes and have some stories to share. I'd love to hear those. You can reach me at dailyalchemy.com. And up in the corner, there are some buttons so you can send me an email. You can go to Facebook, Twitter, wherever your favorite social media playground is. And until then, namaste and big hugs. Would you like some help creating more magic in your life? I've got a ton of freebies and goodies for you. They're all tucked away inside my magical freebie vault. You can get free access, though. You just have to go to www.dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault. Again, that's dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault. And when you get there, you can just plug in your name and email and you will get instant access to all kinds of goodies. There are daily and weekly manifesting planners, the how to shift your vibe in five minutes e-kit that has audios and a workbook. There are moon manifesting planners and daily love lists and money trackers and all kinds of goodies right there. I didn't want to make you have to go to a bunch of different pages and sites and wait for certain freebies to come out. So I just took all of my freebies and put them in one place where you could just sign up one time and download any of them that you want at any time that you needed. So you can just head on over to dailyalchemy.com forward slash magical dash freebie dash vault and download them today. Have a magical day. Thanks for listening to the Adventures in Alchemy podcast. Connect with me on the dailyalchemy.com or Facebook at facebook.com slash Michelle Dobbins author. Join us next time for even more magical life tips.